All right. Um, you're going to see this type of expression many, many times in the future in this class, in your geometry, in algebra 2, pre-calculus. Like from, from here on out, you're going to see this quite a bit, where you have particularly a binomial, that means two numbers, squared. So hear from the future, your future, to tell you that uh, there's one main mistake that people make, and it's wrong, and don't make it, OK? Um, and it's an easy mistake to avoid. We just remind ourselves what it means to square something. So what does it mean to square something? Multiply it by itself, OK? What is it that we're multiplying by itself? 6x and 5. Okay. So just to make sure we do this correctly, we need to write this twice. We need to multiply it by itself. We need to distribute everything from the left into everything in the right. Uh, the mistake that gets made here is that people, incorrectly, will make this 6x squared plus 25. Or a little closer to correct would be 6x squared plus 25, which would be 36x squared plus 25, which is still wrong, okay, but it's a little bit better because we did take 6x and multiply it by itself. Okay. So let's do it correctly, and you'll see why that's not correct. So we're going to take 6x, and we're going to multiply it by 6x. So we multiply the numbers together, and multiply the variables together. <coughs> So 6 times 6 is 36, x times x is x squared. And we move along and distribute the 6x to the 5. That's 6 times 5 is 30 times x. 6x six has been fully distributed. Now we move on to the 5. That's another 30x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. Combine like terms. So you can see how this is close, sort of close, but it's missing the 60x. The thing that gets messed up a lot is people just take this 2 and they put it with this guy and put it with that guy and think that's good enough. It's not. All right, so from the future, a warning. Remember this. Remember when you have parentheses squared, just write the parentheses twice just to avoid any mistakes. Distribute everything completely, and you'll be in good shape. If you didn't bring it up, that's something that I was going to bring up. It's a really common mistake. Other questions? Which one? I be out on the outside there with a parentheses next, and you got a parentheses right next. You got uh, multiplication is the understood thing you're doing. So you're multiplying by all this stuff. So what are you going to do with the negative five b to the third? What's the word? Distribute it. Distribute it. We're going to distribute it to everything in here. Okay, so let's get started and take it nice and easy. Here we got negative five times four, negative twenty. B to the third times B to the fifth. B to the fifteenth. Okay. See some heads shaking. Should be B to the what? To the eighth. Because there's three B's times five B's. A total of eight B's being multiplied together. Distribute this to the next term. Negative five times negative two is a positive ten. B to the sixth. Negative 5 times positive b is negative 5b to the fourth. And last 
So be negative 5 times negative 11 is positive 55. And it's still just e to the third. Questions? Everybody got the factoring perfectly right, no problem. It's really great if that's true, but if you have questions, you should uh, bring them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have one in mind? Any of them. So instead of p, we'll use x, just because that's what this is all set up for. So you have x squared. Okay. Now if you remember, um, what we're trying to do is build this rectangle, build a rectangle in such a way that it uses all those pieces perfectly. It's a perfect rectangle, and there's no empty spaces. And uh, then we can see on the left side and the right, the left side and the bottom side what the factors should be. Um, so we have 20p. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna split these 20 up. I'm gonna put uh, 12 of them here. See if I can fit even that many. That works. What what do I now need to put in here? What kinds of squares go in there? The one squares. Okay. How many will go in it? The way that I have it built right now. I've got twelve by eight. What will that be? Ninety-six. Okay, well that's too much, right? So it's not, it's not 12 and 8. Okay, but notice for, for right now what I have is x squared plus 20x. Okay, but right now I'm having 96 come up. So what if I get rid of this one over here and instead put one right there? So now I have 11 here and 9 there. It seems to be getting bigger. Okay, so maybe something down in there. Maybe get rid of this one. Put another one over here. So now I have 13 by 7. Let's try and move a little quicker. Get 
through those two and put them right here. This is 16 and 4. 64. Okay, so 64 of them fit right here. Sixty-four of those one squares would go right there. So you can see, if we take this side, which is x plus four, this side, which is x, this distance is x plus sixteen. If you multiply those together, then we'll get that rectangle that is x squared plus twenty x plus sixty-four x plus 4 and x plus 16. If you want to double check, you can do the distribution. We see it here in the rectangle, the distribution would be the exact same thing, but if we distribute x squared plus 16x plus 4x plus 64, x squared plus 20x plus 64. Thing. We're going to wind up with two parentheses, two binomials that are going to multiply together to make this quadratic. Uh, clearly, we're going to have a p times p is p squared. Then we're going to have these two other numbers here, this one and this one. These two numbers are going to multiply by each other at some point. Right, we're going to distribute this to that, this to that, this to there, and this one. Right here, when we distribute one number to the other number, one constant to the other, what number should we get when we distribute those together? That's when we should get 64. So these two numbers are going to multiply together to get that 64. Okay? And then also, um, we're going to have this number be multiplied by a p. And we're going to have p multiplied by this number. Those are going to be like terms. They're going to both have a p in them. We're going to be able to combine them because they're like terms. And what are they going to have to add together to make? Twenty. Yeah, that's the part where we multiply the four times the sixteen. Uh, or sorry, the, the four times the x and the x times the sixteen. We get sixteen x plus four x. They have to add together to make twenty. these two numbers together, what should we come out with? 20. 20. And when we uh, multiply this guy by this x by that number and this number by the x, we're going to get the two x terms, two like terms, and those two like terms are going to combine together, two x terms combine together to make what? Negative, negative, or negative 9. Try that out yourself. See if you can figure out those two numbers. They're going to multiply to make positive 20 and add to make negative 9. Then, just to make yourself more confident, distribute them together. Make sure that you get what you're supposed to get. Just to remind you what we're looking for here, let's go the other way. Let's multiply two parentheses together and, and just uh, be reminded of, of what that looks like. Uh, so, just 
This has nothing to do with the numbers, at least. It has to do with the concept, but not the numbers of this problem. Um, x minus 9x minus 3. Okay. Just choosing those at random, and let's see what happens. Let's see how it can help us figure this other guy out. So someone help me multiply this together. What's the first term I'm going to get when I start distributing? x squared. x squared. Then what comes next? Negative 3x. Negative, three. Negative, three Negative 9x. Negative 9x. And we happen to have two like terms, so we combine those like terms. x squared minus 12x plus 27. So what we're trying to do is figure out what goes in these blank spots so that if we were to distribute them together, we would get this. Okay. So if we were given x squared minus 12x plus 27, the factored form would be x minus 9 times x minus 3 because... Obviously, the x squared you get from x times x. x times negative 3 and negative 9 times x give us the two x terms that combine together to make negative 12x. And then the negative 3 times negative 9 make 27. So what we're looking for over here is what two numbers will multiply together. You know, it's this green part here. We'll multiply together to make 20. Well, there's a few options. There's a few different ways to multiply together to make 20. And at the same time, those two numbers when you multiply them by their x's, we'll make two x terms that add up to negative 9x. Okay? Let me show you a guess. Okay? I'm going to try uh, 10 and negative 2. Let's see what happens then. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 10 times x is 10x. 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. Okay, that's wrong for several reasons, right? Let's that's one reason that's definitely wrong. Okay, it doesn't add up to negative 9x. And it's got to be a positive 20. Okay, so let's address that positive 20. How could we, could we change something about one of these to make it positive 20? Yeah? Well, with those numbers, then you could just make... Yeah, like, can I, can I change something about one of these so that I get a positive 20 instead of a negative 20? You could make the 10 negative. 10 negative. Or it can make the 2 positive, right? But if I made the two positive, then I would get a negative something, right? Yeah. I want to get a negative. So I'll do two negatives to multiply to make a positive, and two negatives add to make a negative. I want a negative there. Okay, so if I try that, then this will be negative. Let's see what happens. Negative 10, uh, negative 10x, positive 20 now. But now what do we get to get? x squared minus 12x plus 20, okay? So we found two numbers. They multiply together to make positive 20. They just don't add together to make negative 9, right? So what are some other numbers that multiply to make 20? Danielle? Negative 4 and negative 5. Negative 4 and negative 5. Okay. All right, we'll try that. That's going to change this guy here, but they still multiply to 20, so that's not going to change anything there. Negative 4, negative 5. X squared. Uh-huh. Negative 5x, negative 4x, still positive 20, and look at that, they add to negative 9. Okay? That make more sense? Um, so yeah. You gotta play around a little bit with the value of the numbers. I would always suggest just look at this guy right here. They've gotta multiply to make this number, and the factors of whatever number this is, that's, it's a relatively short list. Rather than looking for numbers that add to negative 9, that's an infinite list. There are an infinite number of combinations that add to negative 9. Okay, so let's limit it by looking at this one, making sure these two numbers add to 20. Okay. Or sorry, multiply to 20. And yeah. See if we can mess with the numbers and the and the uh, and the signs. You saw how I had a positive and negative. That made a negative 20. I want a positive 20, so I'll do two negatives that multiply to make a positive 20. We have a short quiz. Do you want to do one of these, one more of these before we start the quiz? One more. One more? Okay.
Example over here, x plus 4, x minus mm, 8. Okay. So again, these numbers aren't related to each other. It's just an example of what we're looking for. Okay. When we multiply these together, we're going to wind up with a quadratic, a, a polynomial, just like this is a quadratic. Okay. The only thing is we've got the quadratic to start with, and we want to go back to what do the factors look like. But let's see how the factors get multiplied together. x squared. If I could just go ahead and fill that in, I know that's going to be x times x. That's really obvious. There's no other way to get x squared but x times x. Okay. Um, okay. So then let's uh, let's skip ahead to the four times the negative eight because I can do this in any order that I want as long as everything is distributed. So this four times this negative eight is negative thirty-two. Okay. So those two numbers multiplied to make negative thirty-two. Well, then these two numbers are going to have to multiply to make what? 85. It needs to be negative. Negative 85. Okay. Well, does anybody have any two numbers that multiply to make 85? Negative 17 and 5. Negative 17 and 5. Positive 5. In fact, uh, yeah, there's no other way to make 85, really. 5 times 17. Uh, those are two prime numbers. So 5 times 17. Uh, Multiply to make 85, so we do have the x squared like we're supposed to have. We get the negative 7 times the positive 5 makes negative 85. Okay. And the negative 17 times the x gives us negative 17x. The x times 5 uh, gives us, yeah, the x times 5 gives us positive 5x when we combine these two like terms. x squared minus 12x minus 85. Now, what if? this to a negative 13. How many ways are there to multiply to make 85? One. I guess two if you count 85 times one. Okay, that doesn't seem like that's what we would do. So what would you say then if, if you can only choose 17 and 5 or 85 and 1 and you're supposed to add to make negative 13? What kind of conclusion would you make? Okay, there's one option. There's 17 times 5. It's got to be 17 times 5 to make 85, right? I'm not going to choose 16 times 12 or 4 times 9. Like None of those multiply to 85, so I have to choose two numbers that multiply to 85. That's how I can narrow down my choices. The only other possibility would be x maybe like minus 85 times x plus 1. Get the x squared. I get the negative 85, but in the middle with these x terms, I get positive x minus 85x. It's x squared minus 84x minus 85. The only ways to multiply to make 85 are 17 and 5 or 85 and 1. And neither one of them gives me negative 13x in the middle. So what's your conclusion about this? About factoring that. What's that? You cannot factor that one with a negative 13. Can't be done. There are no factors that work. Okay. Um, at least no realistic or, or reasonable numbers. Let's call them reasonable numbers. There might be some crazy 
square root of some weird number that could work, but we're just not there yet. We're not at that level. So we're not even going to worry about that. There are no regular numbers that we would normally use that would work. So we just say, not possible, not factorable, can't do it. And we know that because we tried all the factors of 85 and couldn't find any that combined together to make it negative 13. We can get negative 12, we can get negative 84, we can get positive 12, we can get positive 84, but we can't get negative 13. Is that going to be in the quiz? Huh? I was going to be on the quiz. That it's not factorable? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, shouldn't be. Unless, yeah. No, there shouldn't be. questions, I, I'm glad to answer more questions. So They'll all be factorable. Is the quiz just the 9.5? It's, uh, it's all, everything we've done in nine, chapter 9 so far. We might add small little bit of green goals. Okay, combine like terms. Or subtract them, which means we've got to distribute the negative first and then add like terms. Uh, multiply some polynomials together. Uh, back to some polynomials. Okay. Combine like terms, multiply polynomials together. We've done several of them here. Okay, but we might be asked to do something like this. Uh, x plus 2 times x squared plus 3x minus 5. But if we simply remember to distribute everything to everything else, we will be fine. Combine like terms at the end. Do this one really quick for you. x to the third plus 3x squared minus 5x. Okay, so x is done. Now on to 2. 2x squared plus 6x minus 10. Like terms? Uh, these guys are like terms, so we get 5x squared. These are like terms, so we get 1x. And minus 10. How much do I have to distribute something? I have to multiply these two things like this, or two binomials, or do some fairly light factoring. 